So today is going to be a quick unboxing and initial setup of the UHD TV from LG, new for 2016. It is the 43UH61A if you purchase it from Costco or the 6100. Uh, it is the same TV. Um, the difference between this and the model up is basically the smart remote. This one comes with the uh, generic remote. However, it is still a smart TV. It is 4K um, and it does work with 4K 60 Hz using HDMI 2.0 standard. <clears throat> I'm going to take out some of the accessories. The stand is a little different. It's got two L-shaped stands that go on each side. Uh, along with the power cable, the power bar is built into the TV, so it's a straight plug on the back. Uh, the TV itself is fairly light. It is built of uh, plastic. Um, however, it is not too thick. It's not the thinnest TV. Um, the L-shaped brackets seem to fit in well, they're pretty easy to clip in and uh, screw on. Uh, and the TV is fairly steady. However, the one downside for this is there is no tilt or pan on the TV with this stand. Uh, so whichever way you face it, it will face flat. Uh, the remote again there, as you see, is basic. It comes with a few manuals, 1-800 uh, help number, and a tie for all your cables. Um, the remote again, as I was saying, is basically a dumb remote, however it does have the number keypad which some people may actually like, allowing you to jump to channels directly. Also because this TV does have the built-in DirecTV tuner for the uh, Genie HD DVR. Uh, so if you've got one of those at home, you don't need to get another DVR or a, uh, another TV satellite box, this TV has it built in so you can actually just plug it in, uh, set it up and it will, you can watch any of your recorded shows. Uh, the brackets are also of course made of plastic but they are reinforced, uh, they fit in pretty well and keep the TV fairly steady. I've got mine on top of my uh, 60 inch LG and um, they doesn't seem to move too much um, and it does a very good job. Um, back to the TV. With the box and packaging uh, and everything, the TV does weigh about 26 kilograms, um, sorry, 26 pounds, um, but once out it's more, uh, I would say around 20, 21 um, in actual weight with the stand. Um, now one thing I do want to mention, this TV, um, the HDMI's, there is two on the back and one on the side, um, and they do stick out, so when you have an HDMI cable plugged in it is hard to get it flush against the wall just because you need to leave about an inch or two um, for the cable to run out uh, now as you can see here the installation of the legs is actually fairly easy they sort of snap into place and then just the two screws uh, and you are pretty much set And that is it. And uh, we're going to take a look at the back here. The side panel there has the one HDMI. Uh, the back has the two HDMI and the AV inputs. It does have a little digital audio out <coughs> for those of you <coughs> excuse me, that may want to connect this to a receiver. Um, also, you can see the cable TV input in the back for direct uh, antenna hookups. Um, the TV itself is pretty big. The actual viewing area I believe is 42.3 inches. Um, I will put the actual specs in the detailed description below. Now let's start it up and uh, do the initial setup. One thing I wanted to mention is the yearly cost to run the TV. Um, it's actually on the much lower end. It's about $14 for a TV this size, um, which is about on par, a little bit less than some of the Samsung TVs. The picture quality, as you can see here, is fairly good. Um, now, don't mind the camera that's picking up the glare. The actual glare on the TV is not that bad. Um, the colors did require a little bit of uh, adjusting. I do uh, use a i1 Display Pro color calibrator. Um, and I we did use that to basically refine the colors of this TV. Initially on setup, you can see the pictures that they provide um, and their little graphics are all very nice in color, 
uh, very colorful, everything pops. But when you're watching uh, HDTV or any tuner input, um, the color calibration is pretty off. Uh, and I was actually using this also as a monitor, a secondary monitor. And uh, it does a pretty good job. The one thing you have to keep in mind is this TV does have a setting where you can select PC for a certain input. Now I'm not sure what exactly it changes in its settings, however, uh, I did find that with that setting on, the response time as well as the text was quite a bit um, more legible. Um, with that off and just a straight HDMI plug, um, it wasn't that great. Um, also what I'm using is um, the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Um, with a adapter for DisplayPort to HDMI. There are a few you can look up at Amazon. The one I'm using actually does the 4K at 60 Hertz. There's not too many of those. They sell for about 20 to 30 dollars, I believe. Uh, so I picked mine up there. I'll also include that in the description if you're interested. Um, now, of course, these are all the generic agreements that you go through for all the smart TV functions, and then you can basically set if you want to get ready for watching TV on this. Um, now I didn't have anything hooked up and I wasn't planning to, uh, so I left all of that blank. However, as you can see, if you don't enter in the zip code, it doesn't really let you go ahead. So uh, just make sure you put in your zip code, or any zip code is fine here. I'm just predicting a random zip code from Chicago. Um, Okay, and that's the end of the setup actually. Now, you do have to keep in mind once a TV does turn on and you're connected to the Wi-Fi, when you do try and load the smart apps like Netflix, um, Wudu, or any of the other ones, uh, YouTube even, it does ask you to update the software. So I'm gonna try and run YouTube. And as you notice right here, the first thing that comes in is update. Uh, the good thing is the updates don't take very long. Um, you'll see here it takes a few seconds and I have time lapses. Uh, to speed up the process a little bit um, but once the updates are applied uh, it will automatically update for future uh, references the other thing I did want to mention is the TV has a built-in memory uh, as you can see there about 635 megs which are free um, so I believe it's a one gig uh, hard drive or one gig storage available on this TV with the uh, other apps taking up the storage um, now, as you can see, that was fairly quick with the uh, update. I'm just going to try and find something maybe either in 4K um, or HD I can play for you so you can see how it looks. Obviously, the video I'm playing right now and being recorded in is only 1080p, uh, so you're not going to be able to see 4K, but you will be able to see the colors and so forth. Um, the other thing, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that I had to ca calibrate the color on this monitor. When you do play videos from YouTube, Netflix, or any of these sources, uh, that seems like the calibration has already been done for this TV, or the information that's coming down um, is interpreted by the TV for calibration. Um, so the colors look very nice, they pop very well. Uh, and of course, because it is an IPS display, the viewing angle on this is tremendous. You can be anywhere between 180 degrees uh, horizontally and you will not see color shifts. Um, the downside is the panel on this, rather than being RGB, is RGBW. And I hope you enjoyed that uh, little unboxing and quick review.